So capillaries are the exchange vessels. This is the place where, where the gases, nutrients, waste products, etc., enter the tissues, leave the tissues, uh, go into the kidneys for disposal, go into salivary glands, go into the lungs, etc. There's fundamentally three types of capillaries. They're the most common one are the continuous capillaries. These are the ones that you think of when you think of, of capillaries. But there are some other modifications. One's called fenestrated and the other one is called sinusoidal capillaries. So the continuous capillaries are the most common. They're everywhere in, this, in the dermis of the skin, in the muscles, uh, in a lot of the the organ tissues, et cetera, et cetera. Um, these are the ones that are in the vasovasorum. So they, uh, the endothelial cells are joined together with tight junctions. They, uh, and there's slight little clefts that allow fluids to pass in and out. Uh, the, uh, there is a variation that happens in the brain for the blood-brain barrier, but that's that's almost irrelevant. The uh, um, the point is that uh, these the the endothelial cells are continuous. There's no gaps in them per se. Um, it looks basically like this: um, the each endothelial cell helps form the the walls. Uh, where the endothelial cells come together, there's there's some slight cleft, some slight openings, and that's where the liquid leaves uh, or enters. Uh, it really plasma becomes interstitial fluid, interstitial fluid becomes plasma through it. Uh, these are not very permeable, and definitely the holes, the clefts are very very small and only allow the passage of liquids. The fenestrated capillaries uh, are just what they sound like. Fenetra is window. Fenestra uh, is window. So this is capillaries with windows in them. Uh, they're little pores. They are more permeable than continuous capillaries. Uh, and they uh, are when you need a lot of liquid to pass. Uh, so. Um, so there's lots of absorption. So we see these in the in the small intestines. We see the, these in the glands, in the kidneys, that kind of thing, uh, in uh, the eyeballs where uh, the aqueous humor is made. Those sorts of places have fenestrated capillaries. Basically, uh, if you think of these as a hose, this is those. Um, garden hoses that you use to water the lawn that have all the little pinpricks in them and the water squirts out. It, that's, that's fenestrated. It looks like this. In, in each of the uh, in, in each of the endothelial cells there are pole, pores, there are holes. <clears throat> There's also still the intercellular clefts between them but nevertheless these pores just increase the permeability. Leakier, as it were. The sinusoidal capillaries um, have big holes in it, a sinus, uh, which it means big hole. Uh, so there's fenestrations and there's these large holes. And basically what they do is they allow chunks to pass. We've, so large molecules, uh, blood cells. So we need it where we're going to be passing solid material. So things like in the bone marrow where we're making blood cells, the blood cells have to enter the bloodstream and they enter through the sinusoids of the sinusoidal capillaries. We find it in the liver, we find it in the spleen, in those sorts of places where there has to be a large exchange. Um, they end up looking like this. Holes, large clefts, basically sinuses. Uh, very permeable to both liquids and chunks, as it were. Now all capillaries are 
found uh, associated with one another in this network called capillary beds. Uh, and in the, within the capillary bed, there's really a couple of types of vessels. There's one that's a shunt. It's called the meta arteriole, and it it's allows the passage of blood when you don't want blood going through the capillaries themselves. So in places where you don't want exchange. Um, so it really goes from the, the arteriole to the venule uh, as a detour or a bypass. The other type are the capillaries. These are the exchange vessels. Uh, now they branch off the uh, terminal arteriole, the last arteriole, and this is where exchange happens. Now they could be large or they could be quite small. Most of them are intermediate, someplace in between. So just before the capillary beds, there are, uh, there are smooth muscle bands that wrap around the walls uh, at the inflow to the true capillaries. And they, re they regulate the blood flow into those capillaries, and they're called sphincters. They, they look like this. So this center thing is the meta arteriole, the shunt. These are the true capillaries, and you'll see that there are precapillary sphincters at the beginning of each one of them. When the sphincters are open, blood goes through the, uh, the bed, and lots of exchange happens. When the sphincters are, are closed, blood just passes through the, um, the thoroughfare channel. Resistance goes way up. Blood goes to different capillary beds, usually, uh, because, that, because of the back pressure. Venules basically are the coming together of these capillaries of the capillary beds. Um, they, uh, there's a transition. They, they act still a little bit like capillaries where there's some exchange. They're porous. Um, they, they start to get bigger and bigger. And as they get bigger, they, uh, there's more and more tunica media. There's more and more smooth muscle. Um, so we, we call these post-capillary uh, venules. So when these venules all converge, uh, in, they form veins. Veins have a large lumen and thinner walls than the arteries. Um, blood pressure is way lower in the, the veins than in the arteries. Um, they they don't have a lot of tunica media, but they do have a lot of um, tunica externa, tunica adventitia. Now, at any given time, more than half the blood in your body is in the veins. So these are called capacitance vessels in that they, if you need more blood, you get it from the veins. You don't steal it from other arteries. So... Um, it's almost like having a, a little bit of a savings account, a bank account for blood. When we look at it, you'll see that the artery has got a thicker wall and has a much more definite shape. The vein is thinner walled, more likely to collapse, uh, but a much larger lumen. This is interesting. You'll notice that uh, at any given time, there's 60% or so of the blood is in the systemic veins. Um, the uh, systemic arteries have about 15%. The pulmonary blood vessels have about 12%. Uh, the heart, eight, capillaries, five. So basically, um, about the same amount of of stroke volume in the heart ends up passing through each capillary uh, with each heartbeat. Uh, so when we look at veins, I've already 
said this a couple of times that they are large diameter lumens so they're low in resistance and they have these valves and uh and the valves really uh keep the blood flowing towards the heart now there's more valves in the uh in the veins that have to work against gravity so that's really the veins of the limbs uh, your legs have more than your arms but your arms have way more um, and uh, when we were talking about the heart we we talked about what a sinus is and uh, it really is uh, it acts like a vein but it doesn't have the adaptations that the vein has I also when we talked about the heart when we talked about the coronary blood vessels talked about the idea of an anastomosis anastomosis is an interconnection of blood vessels without capillary beds so uh, it gives alternate pathways when two arteries come together they call them arterial uh, anastomosis uh, so we have them around the joints we have them in the heart we have them in the brain and these are really give secondary roots it, it's uh, it's kind of a backup in case something goes wrong with the main um, really in the arterial bed or the capillary bed the uh, the thoroughfare uh, blood vessels the meta arterioles are really uh, a bit of an anastomosis between a vein and an artery um, so that would be arterial venous anastomosis uh, venous anastomosis happen when two veins come together if you look at the back of your hand you can see dozens of them uh, venous anastomosis are very 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 common because um, you want as many low pressure routes for the return of blood as as possible sometimes people get artificial arterial venous anastomosis as a result of an accident or surgery um, a friend of mine had a hip replacement done and uh, and they ended up kind of nicking the blood vessels and he ended up with an artificial uh, venous arterial anastomosis that he didn't really know about for years uh, he had the hip replacement done because of an accident when he was younger uh, and by the time he was in his early 40s that hip replacement had worn out and he had to have another one done when they opened him up to do the second hip replacement his veins were under high pressure because the 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 arterial venous anastomosis and he almost bled to death uh, to do this to the surgery they had to not do the surgery they stopped the bleeding and then uh, for weeks he had to have lasers uh, uh, burn and close up the anastomosis they he, so he had to have uh, uh, things inserted right into his blood vessels and and those anastomosis closed before they could actually do the surgery so while there are uh, anatomical ones there are also artificial ones there are ones that that happen because of accidents or because of surgery scarring that kind of thing <laughs>